you want to get into University of Rochester, and I want to help you do it. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one as you navigate the college admissions and application processes at collegemeister.com. University of Rochester is one of my favorite schools, and it lives in this sort of interesting constellation of uh, overlapping schools like Case Western, like Carnegie Mellon, like Wash U and St. Louis, to some extent even like Brown. Uh, and it has sort of all these interesting overlap institutions because it is a really multifaceted uh, and dynamic undergraduate educational environment. So I really like the university a lot. It's in upstate New York. And let's just dive right in and talk about some tips so that you can seal the deal at University of Rochester. Tip number one. Below this video is a link to my classic article, How to Get into the Ivy League Ethically. I want you to read it. It's over at admissions.blog. Again, it's linked right below this video. But read it from top to bottom because that article explains what you can and should be doing in 9th grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade into the summer before 12th grade so that you can really do all that you can to set a beautiful table for the most important year of your life to date, which is your senior year, when you will be completing your applications for colleges and universities, at which time you will be perfecting and drafting and submitting your application for admission to Rochester. But if you don't do what it takes the three first years of high school, you're already going to be at a huge deficit in terms of your chances of getting into Rochester. And many students don't understand that the college application process is actually a four-year process. They just think of it as a few-day process when they're completing their application during their senior year of high school, when in fact, the content of your application is going to cover a lot of your life choices, frankly, from the beginning of high school all the way through the moment you hit submit on that application. That article will help you conceptualize that in a much more clear way or a clearer way, so that you are going to burst into your senior year in a position of strength. Tip number two, University of Rochester, like all selective colleges and universities, and we'll talk more about how selective Rochester is in a moment, they really do want to learn about you as a student and you as a person. And therefore, I always encourage students to Rochester to not do the minimum, but to rather do the maximum. And what I mean by that as it relates to your extracurricular activities is don't just complete the activities page on the common application and call it a day because, oh, well, there's only so many characters and therefore I can't really describe in great detail what it is I did in this club or this sport or this particular activity because there's only so many characters in that section and therefore I'm just left in that position where I can't do more. That is doing the minimum. I want you to do the maximum, fight to the finish. One way you can do that at University of Rochester when you apply on the common application is to go into the additional information section of the Common Apps writing page. This is located below the essay section on the writing page. And there you will find a place where you can share up to 650 additional words about anything you feel is relevant to your application. In that field where you have 650 words, you should plop in there or throw in there a 650 word longer resume basically about yourself and what you have been up to over your high school career in the summers between your high school years. Again, you can only go back as far as the summer before ninth grade, uh, but most likely if you're a compelling applicant to University of Rochester, you're going to have more to say and write about one or more of your extracurricular activities than that would fit into the activities page. So again, this does not replace the activities page. You still must complete the activities page. And God willing, you have 10 activities to share on that activities page because there are 10 slots for 10 different activities on the activities page. But let's say you have 13 activities. Let's say you only have 10 activities, but you have more to say about five of them. In either of those cases, you have more content to throw into the additional information section on the Common Apps Writing plays play page. Please use it to maximum effect. If you want to learn how to draft a beautiful extracurricular resume that you can use in multiple different ways throughout your application process, not just to Rochester, but for other schools, I strongly recommend that you take my very short course 
that is called How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume, which I will also link below this video. Click on it. It's over at Gumroad. It's for sale. You can rent it. You can buy it. It's definitely worth every penny because it's going to help you put together an extracurricular resume in the format of an extracurricular resume as opposed to a generic resume or a professional resume or an internship resume. They all are different genres of resume. That course will quickly and efficiently and effectively teach you how to put together an extracurricular resume for your college application specifically. And again, you'll have a 60, 50, 650 word version of that to use on the additional information section of the Common Apps writing page for a school like University of Rochester. Next, I want to say tip number three. If University of Rochester is your first choice school, if you know you want to go there above all other schools and as a family you have determined that you are willing to uh, risk committing yourself before getting your merit and or need-based aid, I strongly encourage you to apply early decision and or early uh, decision two. Well, you can't do both. Early decision one or early decision two. University of Rochester offers both options. Overall, University of Rochester is a quite selective school. Its acceptance rate overall is in the 30s as of this filming. It's not nearly as selective as Wash U. It's not nearly as selective as Carnegie Mellon. It's certainly not Brown. Uh, it's in the neighborhood of, of uh, selectivity of Case Western. Uh, but the thing that you have to understand is the overall acceptance rate is a fake acceptance rate. That doesn't exist for anyone who really applies to Rochester. There are three acceptance rates. There's the early decision one acceptance rate, the early decision two acceptance rate, and the regular decision acceptance rate. The early decision acceptance rate at Rochester are quite a bit higher than the regular decision acceptance rate at Rochester. So regular decision, you're competing against all the students who didn't get into all the aforementioned schools and many others. Whereas early decision, you're only competing against students whose first choice is University of Rochester. So the pool is much smaller and you have an opportunity to stand out that much more. And if it truly is your first choice, what a great way to demonstrate interest that it is in fact your, cho your first choice and you were ready to sign on the dotted line by applying early decision. Early decision one deadline is in November. Early decision two deadline is in January. You will hear within usually basically a month, a month and a half from when you initially apply uh, whether or not you get in. But if you do get in, you must go. So it is a commitment. It's a commitment that you must make. You're guardian must make, as well as your counselor must make, every one of those individuals will be signing a little form that says, if you get in, you will go and your counselor will pull your transcripts or not send them to any regular decision schools if you get in early decision. So as a result, it's extremely important that you, you all be on the same page about this. But overall, when you see that University of Rochester has an, an acceptance rate hovering somewhere in the 30s right now. One day maybe it'll be in the 20s, but right now let's say overall their acceptance rate's in the 30s. That's the average of the regular decision acceptance rate, which is lower, and the early decision acceptance rates, which are quite a bit higher. So again, if it's your first choice, commit yourself, get it done early, get it done right, obviously, and get it done early, uh, and apply early decision. My next tip is related to something we're not really going to talk about in this video, but definitely review the links below this video related to my bonus links, uh, videos that I've done in the past related to the Common App essay. As I mentioned earlier, University of Rochester wants to accept not just the student, but the person. And the Common App essay is your best opportunity to put the spotlight directly on yourself for 650 words and write a compelling story that shares with college admissions officers at Rochester and elsewhere details about your life, your value system, your perspective, your character that you have not been able to uh, and, and, and uh, share elsewhere. Or no one else has either in their letters of recommendation, etc. So your Common App essay matters a lot. I'm not going to go into greater detail about specifically the Common App essay piece. That's a whole other video or two or three or four, as you see in the links below. But review and watch all of those uh, videos related to the Common App essay so that you can strategize about which prompt to use and how to effectively write your Common App essay. My next tip has to do with the actual supplement to University of Rochester. University of Rochester uh, has two short little essays uh, on its supplement to the common application. Here are the supplemental essays for the 2023-2024 admission cycle, which I believe are the same as the supplemental essay prompts for the 2022-2023 admission cycle. Here they are. 
Again, we're filming this in July. Anything could change. I've seen crazy things happen at other schools, not Rochester. But again, these are pretty much written in stone for the 2023-2024 admissions cycle. The first prompt, you have 250 words with which to respond to this first prompt. The University of Rochester motto, Meliora, it, or is uh, ever better, that's what it means, deeply integrates critical core values into all that we do. So these core values of equity, leadership, integrity, openness, respect, and accountability define not only who we are, but also who we hope to become. Please use this space below to highlight a time, creative idea, or research experience when you put into action one or more of these characteristics in order to make yourself, your community, or the world ever better. When we talk about characteristics, we're specifically talking about equity, leadership, integrity, openness, respect, and accountability. Basically, you have a very easy job here, in my opinion. Pick a story from your past that demonstrates, that shows you demonstrating a commitment to equity, demonstrating leadership, demonstrating integrity, demonstrating openness, demonstrating respect, and accountability. Just one of those things. It doesn't have to be all of those things, obviously. You can't do it in 250 words, all of those things. Uh, and, and, by your choice of, uh, of, of event to, to focus on uh, or creative idea or research experience to focus on, you are going to demonstrate to the college how you have made yourself, your community, or the world better. How do you structure this? You have 250 words. You have a mini essay here. That means a one or two sentence introduction paragraph with a thesis that gives the reader a roadmap about the core value that you will be focusing on in the body that proves the thesis. In the body paragraph, you should show, don't just tell, show yourself in action, you know, in this particular time, in, in engaging in this creative idea or research experience, when you uh, put into action one of those values. Uh, and then make sure that by the end of that second paragraph, that body paragraph, you've shown how you have made yourself, your community, or the world better as a result of you demonstrating, let's say, integrity or openness. Uh, and then finally, the conclusion sentence or two, it's not a paragraph, it's a conclusion sentence or two because you don't have more space, uh, should say something new and intriguing. I would strongly recommend that that new and intriguing thing be forward-looking, whereas the rest of the essay has been backward-looking to a very specific episode or time from your past. The uh, final sentence or two, the conclusion, I think, should be forward-looking, where you somehow name drop University of Rochester and indicate how you uh, anticipate continuing to carry the flag, let's say, of leadership or equity or openness or respect and accountability at University of Rochester. Uh, and you can thank them for their time in reviewing your application or something there, too. But something new, some new idea. Do, idea. Do not just restate the thesis. If you just restate this introduction slash thesis in different words, that is boring, that is prosaic, that is a waste of your final sentence or two. Say something new and intriguing that makes them want you more, not something that makes you feel repetitive or stale. The next short essay, you have a choice of prompt uh, to respond to. You have four different prompt options, but you only have 200 words with which to respond to one of these prompts. This is the response where you're going to be able to show yourself in action more on the University of Rochester campus. I'll read all four of them quickly for you. They're also copied and pasted below this video if you want to review them in greater length on your own time. Or as you listen to my voice, you don't want to keep looking at my head, you just want to read below. By all means, click the description of this video below and you will be able to read along with me. But here are the four options you have in order to respond to your second essay on the University of Rochester supplement to the common application. Number one, American social reformer, abolitionist, writer, and statesman Frederick Douglass said, some know the value of education by having it. I knew its value by not having it. Explain ways in which your background, educational experience, or opportunities have directly influenced you and your ability to do good in the world. What specific moments of growth, lessons learned, and resilience in your life have prepared you to promote positive change for your community and the world. Option number two, Dr. Donna Strickland, the University of Rochester alum and 2018 Nobel Prize winner in physics said, there is no point in me 
being anything other than me. The University of Rochester encourages student, each student to embrace their the intersectionality, excuse me, the intersectionality of their identity and create their own individual curricular path and experience. What qualities and experiences make you the best version of yourself? What unique elements of your background, perspective, and experiences will you bring to your community? Choice number three, Susan B. Anthony, champion of abolition and women's rights, once said, organize, agitate, educate, must be our war cry. As you look to join our community of doers and disruptors, in what ways do you envision using both the curricular flexibility and the co-curricular opportunities to invoke change for marginalized groups? How have your unique live experience is how ha, how has excuse me your unique lived experience shaped you and prepared you to be a change maker here and finally the University of Rochester benefactor entrepreneur photography pioneer and philanthropist George Eastman of Kodak fame said what we do during our working hours determines what we have what we do in our leisure time hours determines what we are how have the ways you spent your time enabled you to grow as a person? What challenges have you have helped define you and your role within your community? This is very overwhelming at first. You have all these questions. They all seem having to do with social justice, uh, at least the first three especially, and you may not know how to proceed. I want to help you cut through this. Basically, you have to write an essay where you're describing your value system in some new way that you have not yet described elsewhere on your application to Rochester inclusive of the common application. You're going to describe maybe some value that you have or background you have or uh, you know something that you bring to the table and you want to show in this essay you living out that value system or pursuing that passion. Uh, within the community of University of Rochester. That's basically what you have to do regardless of the prompt you choose. Obviously the prompt you choose will help you frame it slightly differently. Obviously if you pick the one about uh, Frederick Douglass, uh, you're going to hyper-focus in on a specific moment of growth or a lesson learned uh, from your past that have prepared you to promote positive change for your community in the world. So you may forget that you need to actually show yourself critically stopping at University of Rochester and learning from and gaining from the University of Rochester experience in order to actually help prepare you for the ultimate change you want to create in the world. But you must do that. You must have University of Rochester be at least a supporting character in your response to prompt number two, whichever of the prompts you respond to. If you do the Donna Strickland one, you know, you're going to be focusing more on what qualities and experiences make you the best version of yourself. Again, I would pick something small. One experience you've had or one quality that you bring to the table uh, that you will bring and enhance the community. I think that's probably the easiest one because it's very focused on specifically describe something about yourself and then explain how that will enhance our community. You can and should show that facet of yourself enhancing the community at University of Rochester, but you should also use some of your response to specifically point to opportunities that exist at Rochester that, that Rochester that you're really attracted to that will also enhance you and allow you to continue to grow in this particular quality or build upon your past experience that you are introducing earlier in the essay. Um, on the Susan B. Anthony one, how has your unique lived experience shaped and prepared you to be a change maker here? Again, that's pretty simple too relative to the first and the last one. Uh, because not everyone's dealt with challenges, which is more focused on the last one. Not everyone has a, a goal already in mind about how they're going to promote positive change in the community in the world, which is the first one. So number three, the Susan B. Anthony one says, basically, how has your unique lived experience shaped you and prepared you to be a change maker here, meaning at Rochester? The previous portion of that question also says, uh, in what ways do you envision using both the curricular flexibility and the co-curricular opportunities at Rochester to invoke change from marginalized groups? So that obviously still requires you to be somewhat social justice focused. If you're not, don't touch that one, because if you don't really care about marginalized groups, you don't have anything to say to that aspect of uh, the Susan B. Anthony question. So you do have to fully respond to whatever prompt 
you opt to respond to. Don't just respond to part of it because these are weighty prompts. But again, to see the forest through the trees, it's extremely important that no matter which prompt for you, you use for the second required question on the University of Rochester supplement, you only have 250 words and you need to make sure that you are painting a picture as at least the subplot of that essay of the fit between you and Rochester and Rochester and you. Why are you good fit for Rochester? Why is Rochester a good fit for you? And to do that, you really need to give specific details of things that exist at Rochester or the value system that you have that aligns with Rochester that will make Rochester admissions at readers believe that you could not have written this application essay for any other school on your list uh, because there are Rochester specific details infused within your response. Again, how do you respond to it in 250 words or 200 words? Excuse me. I said 250 words. It's only 200 words. You have to have an intro with a thesis, you have to have a body that supports the thesis and proves the thesis, and then you have to have a closing paragraph that goes a step beyond the thesis that does not just say something that you've already said in the thesis, but says something new. Again, so that's a relatively traditional setup, but in terms of how you do it, it will of course be based off your past life experiences and how you want to tackle or navigate the, the, uh, the challenges of, of demonstrating social justice elements to your personality, versus wanting to maybe just play it more straight uh, and not necessarily have to get into the thicket of politics or current progressive causes. Uh, but that's your choice and you can be successful no matter which route you choose as long as you stay focused on showing yourself in a new light, having a clear and concise structure, as well as making sure that Rochester plays a role in your response. I will also say in closing, and this is not an official tip, but as a part of the Rochester supplement to the common application in past years, there has been a section or a question, if you will, where they ask, are you interested in pursuing research while enrolled at University of Rochester? And you've been able to say yes or no. Uh, I hope that question continues to be asked in future cycles. Uh, you only have 20 words with which to respond to that prompt or that quick question. So it's not an essay, but I would definitely answer yes, regardless of whether or not it's true. And say yes and think about something you would like to research while a student at University of Rochester. So again, you use that opportunity for your greatest benefit. Don't just say no and leave it blank. That's a missed opportunity to score a goal on the University of Rochester application. Try to further differentiate yourself by being as authentic as you possibly can about maybe a topic you would like to research. And that's another opportunity for you to maybe name drop a particular department, program, or professor. Uh, that you would like to conduct your research with or in. My name is Craig Meister. I think you now have a very good chance of getting to University of Rochester if you implement all of these strategies, ideas, and suggestions that I provided you on this call. I tried to make it as fast as I could, but I know it went a little bit longer than maybe you had hoped. But again, I wish you the very best as you apply to get into University of Rochester. If you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout your college application process, go to collegemeister.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Share my channel with other people in your orbit or that you know who will be navigating the college application process in the coming days, weeks, or months, or years because I do these videos whenever I have a chance when I'm not working one-on-one -on -one with clients. Until next time, my name is Craig Meister. Stay safe and stay well, and I wish you the best of luck on your application to University of Rochester.